Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your bro, hope you're doing well. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can start writing SQL using the MySQL Workbench. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, let's get started everybody. SQL, it's an acronym meaning Structured Query Language. SQL is used to create, retrieve, update, and delete data from a database. Suppose we own a business, like the Krusty Krab from SpongeBob. If we had to manually track all of the transactions by pen and paper, well, that would be a lot of extra work. If we had a database, we could keep track of these records electronically and save ourselves a lot of trouble, right? There's two types of databases I'll discuss. Relate relational and non-relational. A table in a relational database, it resembles an Excel spreadsheet. There's rows and columns. Tables within a relational database can form, well, relationships with one another. And that is done by this concept of keys, which I'll explain in a further topic. Then there's non-relational databases. That's where our data is organized in any format but a table. This could include JSON files, key value pairs, graph data structures, Entities of that nature. To utilize data in a relational database, we would use SQL. Then with a non-relational database, we would use a different language named NoSQL, meaning not only SQL. But since this is an SQL series, we will be working with SQL and relational databases, not non-relational databases. To write SQL statements, we would need the help of a special piece of software known as a database management system. People shorten this to simply DBMS. It's a workspace for us to write SQL statements and generally just work with our database. It'll make our lives easier. There are different DBMS systems you can use, one of which is MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, and Postgres SQL, but there's still many more out there. Each of these database management systems all use SQL, but there's subtle nuances between the syntax of each database management system. If you're familiar with one database management system, transitioning to another will take little to no effort at all. In this series, we will be working with the MySQL database management system, and I'll show you how to download that for both Windows and Mac OS. Hey everybody, in this topic, I'm going to explain how we can download MySQL using the Windows operating system. First of all, head to this website, mysql.com, then go to the Downloads tab, Scroll down, look for MySQL Community Downloads, we'll click on that. Click on MySQL Installer for Windows. Make sure that we have our Windows operating system selected. Then download the first installer. No thanks, just start my download. We will open this download once it's complete. There are various setup types depending on what packages you need. For this series, all we need is the server and the workbench. We'll select the custom radio button, click next. We will need the most recent MySQL server. Add that to products to be installed. Open applications, go to MySQL workbench. We will add the most recent workbench. We can close out of that. There is a shell if you're interested in using that, but I will be sticking with the workbench in this series. Once we have our server and our workbench, I will click next, then execute. Looks like there's an error downloading the workbench. I'm going to try again. And it worked this time for some reason. Let's click next, execute, give it some time. Once the installation status for the server and the workbench is complete, we can click on Next, Next. I'll keep these default configurations. Next. Use strong password encryption for authentication. Let's click Next. Here we're going to set the root password to access the server. Think of some password you would like. I'm just going to set mine to be password. I'll keep it simple. Yeah, of course the password strength is weak. You can add user accounts, but that'll be outside the scope of this series. Click Next. You can start the MySQL server at System Startup if you would like. I'll keep that on. Click Next. Then Execute. Then Finish. Then 
and next. Yeah, we might as well start the MySQL workbench after setup. If this window doesn't pop up, you can easily just search for it. Just look for MySQL workbench. Now we should have a local instance. We can click on this to access our server. Let's pretend that this wasn't here. I'm going to right click, delete connection. If you need to set up a connection, hit this plus button. We'll need a connection name. I'll name this local host. Connection method should be standard TCP IP. The host name is 127.0.0.1 at port 3306. Then press OK. So now that we have our connection set up, we can click on it. Type in the password you set for the server. Mine was simply password. You can save the password if you want. I might as well. Then OK. And here we are within the MySQL Workbench. All right, everybody, in this topic, I'm going to explain how we can download MySQL using the Mac operating system. First, head to this URL, mysql.com. We will go to the Downloads tab. Scroll down, look for MySQL Community Downloads. We'll need both the server and the workbench, but let's start with the server. Click on this file. Mac OS 12 DMG Archive, click the download button. Click on this link, no thanks, just start my download. When this DMG Archive is finished downloading, we can double click on it. Just give it a second. Double click on the DMG Archive. Allow. Click Continue. You can read the license agreement. I'm going to pretend I did. Hit Continue. Install. Type in your computer's password if this prompt comes up. Use strong password encryption. Hit Next. Then we'll need a password for our server. Type in whatever password you would like. To keep it simple for this lesson, I'm just going to set my password to be, well, password. By checking this box, MySQL Server will start once the installation is complete. You might as well keep this checked, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to show you how to start the server manually. Then close. I'll go ahead and move the installer to the trash bin. We have the server downloaded. Next, we need to download the workbench. Again, head to mysql.com. Go to Downloads. Scroll down to MySQL Community Downloads. Click on MySQL Workbench. Then hit the blue Download button. No thanks, just start my download. Then we can double click on this DMG archive when it's finished downloading. So double click. Drag and drop the workbench icon into your applications folder. Before we access the workbench, let's be sure that the MySQL server is running. Click on the top left Apple logo. Go to System Preferences. At the bottom left corner, look for MySQL. Click on it. Then start MySQL server, if it's not started already. And you can check this checkbox so that your computer starts up with it running. Alright, you may need to type in your password. The server is now running. To run the workbench, we can go to Finder, then Applications. Look for the MySQL workbench icon. Double click on it. And here we are within the MySQL Workbench. To access the server, you can click on this local instance connection, then type in the password that you originally set for the server. But if you're missing this connection, you can hit the plus button. 
Then create a new connection name. I'll name this localhost. Use standard TCP IP for the connection method. Host name should be 127.0.0.1 and port 3306. Then press OK. But I already have my connection set up. Click on your connection, type in the password you set for the server. Then press OK. And here we are within MySQL Workbench.